All right, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Emily Mattern. I am a school district consultant with the Office of Health and Nutrition Services. Wendy Crowley is also with us here. She's a department specialist. And we are glad that you have joined us um, for this uh, discussion of the child nutrition programs, emergency operational costs reimbursement program. It's a big mouthful. Um, if you've been on any of our town halls or seen in the news, you might know a little bit about it, but we have gotten our uh, implementation plan approved by USDA. So now we have some more information to share. So basics, um, what is this program? Um, the USDA Food and Nutrition Service is offering an additional emergency reimbursement. Um, this is out of the Consolidated Appropriations Act. So this new uh, emergency operating cost reimbursement program comes in the form of two temporary reimbursement programs. One is for school nutrition programs and a separate one for child and adult care food programs. The purpose is to provide additional funding to sponsors whose revenues were impacted in the early months of the pandemic. The reimbursements are intended to address funding shortfalls and ensure that program operators are in the best position to rebuild um, and continue to serve their communities. So who is eligible for um, this program? All sponsors um, in school nutrition and or the child and adult care food program are eligible. So this includes the national school lunch program, school breakfast program, summer food service program. Sponsors who had a lower reimbursement in the spring of 2020 when compared to the spring of 2019 are able to receive additional reimbursement. A calculation resulting in zero or a negative number when reimbursements are compared will not receive a payment for that month. If a sponsor is eligible, they will be notified this summer. Um, eligible CACFP sponsors will be notified first, and the school nutrition program um, sponsors will be notified um, after CACFP, and it will be after July 1, after the new fiscal year begins. So if you participate in both programs, you will get a separate notification for CACFP, and then also one for school nutrition programs. And the school nutrition one will not happen until July 1st, so it will be completely in the new fiscal year. Um, there are lists currently posted on our MDE's website of eligible sponsors, um, and the actual reimbursement amounts will be added to those lists, hopefully by the end of the week. <laughs> So what is the calculation? Um, MDE will complete the calculations on behalf of the sponsors to determine eligibility and the amount of payments. Each month is calculated separately. So it is possible to receive reimbursements for March and April, but not for May and June. Maybe March and April, it was such a crazy time trying to figure out how to get meals served, but by May and June, you were got your curbside picked up, down, and the community was just flooding. So you with um, people to, to get the meals. So maybe you um, had, so you'll qualify for March and April, but not for May and June. So the, ca the calculation is not very complicated. Um, it is subtracting the total reimbursement amount received during each month of spring 2020. So that is March, April, May, and June. Um, and subtracting that from the corresponding total reimbursement amount earned in that same reference month in 2019. That number is multiple. Okay. You are mute. Emily, I don't know where you went. I can't hear you. Okay, thank you, sorry. <laughs> Not sure either. Okay, so the calculation is take like June 2019, subtract 
um, June 2020 reimbursement multiply by 55% or 0.55. Um, for March only, uh, the number is divided by two because um, the reimbursement is only for half of the month of March because the shutdown started mid-month. Um, if you were a new sponsor and don't have a reference period for 2019, an alternate reference period will be used and we can discuss that individually. Um, please feel free to verify that you, the calculations are correct for your district um, when the amounts are available. And so what exactly, what is included in that reimbursement calculation? Um, so for school nutrition programs, it's the total amount of child nutrition program reimbursements received for each month. So that includes national school lunch program, school breakfast program, summer food service program, and unanticipated school closure reimbursement. So all of those totaled are what is um, compared. If your school district um, participates in CACFP as well, the calculation will be the total CACFP reimbursements received for each month. Remember that if you do participate in both of the programs, they are calculated separately and paid separately. So um, you may potentially get payment for CACFP and a payment for the school nutrition program. If you have questions um, about the calculations, you can email Rich. His email is on the screen. His email is also on the list that we posted um, for of the eligible sponsors. So please double check our calculations and hopefully you'll agree with us. <laughs> so then how are those payments going to be made? Just through the normal payment methods of the cash management system, whatever, however that normally um, goes for you. Um, the initial grant coding is listed. Um, MDE will be creating new grant codes and will require that these funds will be separately coded for the nonprofit food service account. It will be a lump sum um, by program with a total payment. You will be notified of the individual month amounts, but it will be an actual um, total payment that you receive. And if you do participate in both programs, again, you would receive one payment for CACFP and one payment for school nutrition. How will you know that you are eligible for um, reimbursement? You can check the list um, that's posted on our website, but you will be getting a uh, notification um, that you are eligible that includes the monthly amounts. Um, it'll be an email from the GEMS Mars system. CACFP may be going out um, before the end of the month, but school nutrition definitely will not happen until after that July 1 marker. So watch your email for that GEMS Mars um, communication. So in the communication, um, I will get to it in a moment. There will be um, a form. There'll be a link to a form um, for you to fill out. So then you need to be prepared to accept um, or decline the money and indicate how the money will be spent. Now, um, there are some sponsors that will be getting notification. They did make less money in the spring of 2020 than they did in 2019, but then they haven't participated, um, i.e., um, in this new school year, October 2020 through March of 2021. So they are um, still eligible for a payment, but we need to have an assurance statement from you that you are planning on participating once the health emergency has ended. Um, and if you end up um, not returning, MDE may um, take back the payment. So um, Assurance statements are needed for those that have not um, started participating again um, in the program. So next two slides, I have a couple screenshots. This is the um, CACFP form. Um, so you'll get that email notification from GEMS Mars. Click on the link and it will bring you to um, uh, this form. 
it'll fill in your um, sponsor number and name, and then you need to fill in your contact information. Then it shows, um, gives you your total for each um, month that you are eligible for. It might be zero um, in one or two months, or it might be a couple digits. <laughs> There's a definitely a range of what people are eligible for. Um, and then depending, so then the next main question, do you wish to accept the money for the reimbursement funds along with the requirements? Then in that drop down box, it's a yes, no. Depending on how you answer that, you'll have different questions to answer. And so um, mention that we have to uh, let us know how you're planning on spending the funds. And then you can see, maybe you can't read it, it might be too small. <laughs> um, you'll have a couple of choices um, to pick on how you will use them. And please remember to keep documentation of how the money is spent. Just your normal good record keeping. A little bit more um, on how you can spend the money. Um, first of all, it, the money must be deposited into the nonprofit food service account and general and used according to normal program requirements. For example, um, you can use it to offset current deficit in the nonprofit food service account. Um, can use it in the future in accordance with normal meal operations. You can use it to invest in your program, like improving food quality, equipment, kitchen or serving line renovations, point of sale systems, or add additional staffing. Something that's pretty unique for this program is that you can use it to reimburse any local source of funds used to supplement the nonprofit food service account during the reimbursement period to offset the impact of pandemic operations on that account. So at the end of 2020, if the general fund needed to um, put some money into the food service account, um, this reimbursement money can be um, reimbursed the general fund for that. Um, if you have other ideas or options, you can reach out to us at MDE to discuss those. So as I mentioned, we do have a new web page um, that is available. So if you go to the Food and Nutrition Programs website, um, click on the School Nutrition Program Circle, which is the first um, one on the left. And then you have to scroll all the way down because it's a long way down. <laughs> the last circle is the Emergency Operating Cost Reimbursement Program. There are several documents posted. I already mentioned the list. There's a frequently asked questions, and then we'll be adding um, other things as they're available. So quick review, and then we can take questions. I'm not sure if we're getting stuff in the chat box or not, but um, all school nutrition program sponsors are eligible um, if you were participating in the spring of 2020. The calculation um, compares the months of March, April, May, and June um, of, 20, of 2019 to 2020, and then the difference is multiplied by um, 0.55, and March is divided by two. Um, there are separate payments for CACFP and school nutrition. Um, MDE will be doing the calculations, but we welcome you to verify them. You will be notified by email um, from GEMS Mars um, if you are eligible for a payment. Click on the link in the email to accept or decline the, the funds and report how the, the money will be spent. You can check our website for additional updates, um, but then look for payments after um, July 1 and maybe a little bit after July 1, depending on how it all plays out. But um, if you have any questions, um, well, for the purpose of the webinar, you can ask them now, but we also have the mde-fiscal at michigan.gov email. Um, if there are specific calculation questions, you can email rich, um, a-g-u-i-r-r-e-r-1 at michigan.gov. So I am going to end the slideshow, stop sharing my screen. And do we have some chat questions? 
And when do we do. Have... So the first one is if we operated a food service under SFSP all school year, do we need an assurance statement? The assurance statement is for sponsors who have not begun participating after the pandemic. So you do not need an assurance statement, but you will need to formally accept the funds, which is different than an assurance statement. Everyone will need to say, yes, I accept the funds and this is what I intend to spend them on. Why wouldn't the district accept the funds? We don't know, but the USDA is requiring us to ask everybody. <laughs> Hey, Wendy, this is Stacy. Can I comment on that a minute? Jeez. You bet. Yeah, so there are a lot of districts that have an excess fund balance and they have one year after year and they're having a hard time spending it down. And so there could be, um, there could be a large group that don't need any extra funding. So that would be why somebody turns down these extra funds. And our office's perspective would be there are always things that you can spend to make your food service program better for kids. But yeah, we will require a, a letter from the superintendent or the equivalent of a superintendent in your organization if you are going to decline funds. Um, which fiscal year is this revenue to be recorded in? So it depends on when you get your letter. That's why we're intentionally not sending letters to schools, to school nutrition programs until after July 1st, because we don't want you to be in the position of having to balance an excess fund balance with one day left in your fiscal year, right? So it will be in, I have to do the math in my head, 22, right? 22. If you get the letter in July of 21, it will be the 21-22 school year. We're doing that on purpose so that you have that entire year to make choices about how you um, spend that revenue. Um, one question that went directly to me, um, are you referring to a child care provider as a sponsor? Yes. If you are only participating in CACFP and you're a child care center, um, yes, sponsor, you're a sponsor of the program and you are eligible for um, reimbursement. So Emily, the, the homes that exist under a family daycare home sponsor are also called providers. So we may need to <laughs> differentiate. If you receive money from us, you are a sponsor. If you are a fiscal agent, if you are paid from MDE for providing meals to kids, then you are a sponsor. If you get paid by somebody else, then you are not a sponsor. <laughs> Maybe that would be clear. You know, like if you are a provider under ACD or you are a site under the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan, then the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan is the sponsor. Maybe that would be. Thank you for clarifying <laughs> that. Can you give some examples of how to spend funds for a child care center rather than a school or where will we find that information? Well, you could talk to your analyst, Barb. Um, a child care center can purchase equipment for their, for their program. They can spend it on staffing. They can spend it on equipment, on higher quality food, local produce, all of the same, all of the same things. Can you tell us if we can use a shortfall in the current year where the GF is transferring to the special service fund? Um, I guess I don't know what a special service fund is. Is that what you're calling yeah. the nonprofit school food service account? Yeah, cafeteria fund, yep. Yeah. So we had a surplus in the 1920 school year. So when the shutdown happened, our fund balance, our cafeteria fund balance came down and now we're running in a deficit. So if we receive this fund, can I reimburse the general fund for what we're gonna cover for this current year? No. Great. Can, the, <laughs> only, the only circumstance that we've ever heard of you ever being able to reimburse the general fund from this is for the pandemic period. So it would be from fiscal year 20. Okay, great, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. 
and we'll, I can't believe we'll ever see that allowed ever again. That's a, that's a fairly revolutionary <laughs> exception to federal law. We were totally closed in April and May. Will we get reimbursed for those months? You can check, um, you just need to check the list. Um, it depends on the comparison of April and May of 20 to what your circumstance was in April and May of 19. Uh, and you can check with Rich Aguirre if you have a question about the calculation. The CACFP calculations are posted, is that correct, Sarah? Just the eligibility. He is posted. The reimbursement amounts should be posted tomorrow or Thursday at the latest. They're done. They just need to get go through the website process. After July 1st would be great. Yeah, we talked to our auditor friends and our accounting friends and everybody agreed that for schools it needed to happen after July 1st. Can you please show the allowable uses for spending the money slide again? Sure. Uh, the webinar, I'm, yes, we have to get it closed captioned before we're allowed to post the recording of this webinar, Marita, so that takes a little bit. We're not allowed to post anything that's not completely ADA accessible, but we will post it. And we do have, I don't, it's not been posted. We were making a handout type of thing of what you can spend money on, and we are going to post that on the website too but here's the slide. It, it generally is anything that you can spend your regular reimbursement on. So if we serve more meals in 2020 during the months of the comparison, then are we then not qualified? Probably not. It's if you received more reimbursement. So if you received, if you served more lower reimbursement snacks than maybe, but the calculation is about the reimbursement that you received in 2020 then compared to the reimbursement that you received in 2019. But you can check the, reimburse, the reimbursement amounts that Sarah said is gonna be posted in a few days. And if you have questions, you can check with Rich. Anybody else? It's a fairly short list, folks. We thought it was gonna be really hard. If you happen to be a daycare, family daycare home provider, we have been working with your sponsors to get those calculations and to get those payments done as well. That's a, just a different, a different topic. Any other questions? Looks like we've got them answered. It's pretty oh. straightforward. We do encourage you to double check the calculation. Um, and yeah, we'll be in conversation with that. Who will receive the assurance email at the district? It's the superintendent or equivalent and the contact people from your Megs Plus application. So whoever is your primary person in EEM and then your application. Um, and then uh, please expound on the slide that refers to a negative balance. Can you show that one again, please, Emily? Does, do you mean the one about reimbursing, not a negative balance for the eligibility calculation, but a negative balance to reimburse your food service account? Probably. Here's the one about the calculation. So if you, if your June claim of 2019 is um, smaller than your 2020, so that's a negative number, then there's not a reimbursement. Is that what the question is? I'm not sure. It says there was a slide that referred to a negative balance. I think that's when I talked about it. Next slide, she says. So it must be about um, allowable expenditures. What's, what's in there? Those are all the different reimbursements that are included in the calculation. Uh, 
Okay, I don't. If we didn't answer your question, Belinda, you can get contact us directly. Um, if it's an expenditure question, um, you can that MDE fiscal um, email address that's in the comment above. Just email us directly, and we'll answer your question. All right. If there are no more questions, we can. And this, we appreciate you joining us this afternoon and watch your email for that notification. Check out our um, website. I think Sarah put it in the chat initially um, through the direct link. And please reach out if you have questions. Thanks everybody.